Hi, Mark. Hello. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Okay, how are you doing? Pretty good. Good. Do we have a new set of wheels? I do. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm very excited. Thank you. Yes. What did I you don't get? know. I got a 2015 RAV4 LE. Wow. So it's definitely a different drive than an Elantra. <laughs> a lot higher up off the ground. <laughs> I was just going to say higher up, yeah. Um, but I don't know, something was wrong with my engine and I took it to my mechanic and no one could tell me what was wrong. So it was 10 years old, over a hundred thousand. I figured, let me just trade it in and see what I can get. Oh, you mean the Elantra I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's enough. Yeah. Right. You know, it had a really good run. I definitely was sad driving to the dealership the last time I was like, oh. but <laughs> you know, all good things must come to an end. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. What uh, dealership did you go to? I only go to Nikki D's. I'm a loyalist. Oh. I think they have, they don't haggle. They've got best in the valley for like the last 10 years. And everything they buy is super reliable. Yeah. So I like going there. I was really shocked to find out that Pleasant Journey had gone out of business. Yeah, they were... I think Nikki D's his biggest competitor when they were still yeah, around. So exactly. Yep. Yep. What else do we have here? Mark is um, here. Hi, Mark. Most people are here. Gene is having some tech difficulties, so we are Sarah's working on here. that. Hey, Terry. Christina's here as well. Hey, how I'm you doing? <laughs> Hello. Hi. That's Don Ripley. Hello there. Yeah. Uh, it's me. Thank you. It just took me a minute. Sorry. Um, a little okay. bit okay. late. Apologize. Welcome in. Hopefully it won't happen again. <laughs> it's all good. Yep. We don't mark for lateness. Oh, we just publicly okay. shame. Yes. There you go. <laughs> I'm okay. I get shamed publicly a lot. So. Oh, not... no. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, not really. Oh, good. Okay, I'm perfect. Just not, I'm just not bothered by it. So Ah, well, I appreciate that. So I think this number is Jean, who I'm allowing to speak.
Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna turn off my microphone and see if I can help Jean troubleshoot. But I would encourage you all to talk amongst yourself, but not in a way that would violate open meeting law. Maybe about the weather, which is too hot and too humid. I don't. I'm not a big fan of it personally. But um, let me see if I can troubleshoot. Well, Dennis, thank you very much for sending me that picture. You're very welcome. It, it, was, we... uh, it was pretty easy to find. OK, good. <laughs> I was hoping it wasn't buried like in the archives or something. Yeah, well, it was. I was able to, uh, I, I categorized by event. And so I was able to locate that pretty quickly. OK, thank you very much. Yeah, you're very I welcome. Have, I have a question. Um, Jacqueline is having problems getting in, too. And is there a number where we we can dial? It's usually a link that I get, but is there a number? Like if somebody were driving to from one place to another, they could dial in by phone and not necessarily be visual visually like we are right now, but they could hear us and be in yeah. the meeting. Jacqueline wants to dial because she said that her internet is acting wonky, but I don't seem to have such a number. Is that is that number listed on uh, on the uh, the email uh, that uh, Al sends out? I I seem to have remembered seeing a telephone number uh, near the bottom of that thing. Am I right about? Am I wrong? Um, Hang on. Yeah, if you pull up the invite yeah. down towards about halfway, it says, or join by phone. Mm -hmm. And there's US phone numbers. There's several. Oh, yeah. There you go, right there. It's, it's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, near the okay, bottom. Excellent. I made it. Made it. <laughs> okay, I, I got it now. Um, I'll, send the, I'll send the number to her. Huh, okay, let's see if it works. I don't think anybody's ever tried it. Hi, dialing so in. Hey, look at that. That's a <laughs> what what's this green screen thing you're doing? <laughs> I don't know. When I have a rainbow that? here, it's. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on, but I am so happy to be on. <laughs> Well, wonders never cease. All right, oh, I'm going to try so to flip this. Let's see if this works. There we go. And now she's sideways. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, been a summer no. Wow. I am so sorry. I'm late. <coughs> Not. You're surrounded by pines and stuff. Yeah, good grief. Yeah. And now a screen Ooh. froze. And now a screen froze. That's okay. You know, you would think at this point, all the kinks for everything would be removed. Of course. That's yeah. not the case. No. But I guess that keeps people employed. So we can be happy about all the, the IT folks who still have jobs because of this. There you go. Thank God for failure. Otherwise, there'd be <laughs> massive unemployment everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, well, no. we could, uh, Janet Dennis, as the vice chair, you could oh, at least God. read our public um, call to order, roll call, and public comment. I'm terribly so sorry, but don't. I don't have that in front of me. <laughs> oh. What is uh, the public you, comment? Yeah, the the um, the the okay. preamble from uh, Governor right. Baker. I'll send we it just, to you. We Do just lost call. Jean. I know she just yeah, left. Yeah, I know. She's, uh, let me start you an email. Oh, God. Oh, there's Anne. Where is it? Oh. Oh, yeah, there's Anne. Hi, Anne. Welcome back. I think this is should be my last meeting if it wasn't last time. 
last <laughs> meeting was your last time, um, but yeah. you can, you're still so more than welcome to listen. I'm just a guest. I'll listen in. Perfect. Right. I, um, I don't think I should. Let me just. Uh, there we go. I'm going I'm to. I'm kind of wondering if, uh, I mean, what happened to, uh, to poor Jane? Yeah, we lost her. Jane. <laughs> Boy, I think Haley's on the phone with her again. Oh, okay. She's, she's she popping in now. Welcome okay. back. I'm back. Oh my God. This is so stressful. <laughs> I'm asking that Dennis take a roll call so that you can get situated, Jean. You don't have enough things. You don't have enough things to worry about if it's all that stressful. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'm just going to talk fast. I'm fearful. I'm going to lose. I don't know what's happening here, but I'm going to call the, the weather. Making a sound. Okay. Can you see me? Yes, yes, we can see you. No. Okay. All right. I'm going to call the council on aging meeting to order. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18. This meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted via remote participation. This meeting is also being recorded. We will now take roll call to see if everyone's here. Terry? Hi. Terry? Terry? Yes. Terry Carr. Hi. Okay. Okay, good. Chad? No. Jacqueline? She's trying to get on. I gave her the number to dial in. Okay. okay. What's very curious is Anne's name is popping up on my screen. I don't know if anybody else has that. Anne is Thank joining you. us um, as a you. viewer. So actually I am going to Anne, ah. just put you in the um, audience. If I can find the button. Yeah. Okay. Dennis. Right here. Christina. Right here. Dawn. I'm here. Welcome Sarah. Here. And Mark. Here. Excellent. So let me just say for starters, welcome. Delighted to see all of you and thrilled that we can finally get together um, and have a, a, a full council. Um, since we have three members this evening, we wanted to take a little time and um, do some introductions so that we can get better acquainted with one another. Um, and what I'm going to ask us to do is um, share three things. Obviously, your name. The second thing is if you would share a skill, interest, or experience that you're bringing to the Council on Aging, that would be important for, for all of us to know about. And finally, in true orientation form, because that's my background, is I'm going to ask you to share something that you enjoy so we can get to know you a little bit outside the Council on Aging. What do you, whether it's something you like to do, something you, someplace you like to go, just give us a little, little snippet, um, if you would. And so if we would each do that in two or three minutes, that would be awesome. <laughs> So I will try to model for us what we're looking for. Again, my name is Jean Harrigan. My background um, is orientation. As I said, I worked at UMass for many, many years along with parent services. And um, I'm somebody who's had a lot of experience with event planning. I'm very good with logistics. Um, an organization and working with a wide range of age groups. Um, that's something that I really enjoy. And something just as kind of an FYI, I love ice cream. So anytime, if any of you would be up for getting ice cream, 
<laughs> I, I'd be all over that. So that's the scoop on Jean. Who go. would like to go next? Vice Chair could probably go next, I suppose. Uh, my name is awesome. Dennis Vandal. I have, uh, let me see, as far as background is concerned, I have, and what I bring to the organization is that I have a, an extensive background of many decades of involvement in newspaper journalism and uh, both writing and also as a photographer. I was a staff photographer for the Worcester Telegram and Gazette for quite a few years. And then I started my own business and did quite a lot of work for the Boston Globe and the Associated Press. And so there's a lot of photography there as well as writing. And let me see, what else? What do I love? Uh, I love uh, the Cape, Woods Hole, French cuisine. Um, I think that's about it. <laughs> that's uh, it. <laughs> thank you. You're very welcome. Who would like to go next? I'll go. Um, okay, so my name's Don Ripley. Uh, just as a point of interest, I moved to Amherst about a year and a half ago with my wife Cindy. Oh, I'm, a retired, I'm a retired uh, human resource uh, vice president. And but what I bring, what I think I bring to the organization is I'm also uh, I moved from Rhode Island and still Rhode Island. I still have my foot in there. I'm the um, president of the board of trustees of a uh, independent assisted living and skilled nursing center that takes care of about uh, 350 to 400 residents at a time in four different facilities. And um, that's about it. And what I like to do is we like to spend a lot of time hiking and I do also do a lot of woodworking. I hope that was complete enough. Yeah, we were in Rhode Island. Uh, Smithfield is where I lived, but you know, oh. anywhere is 45 minutes from anywhere, so. <laughs> Island, so. I was born and raised in Rhode Island myself, so welcome, oh, really? welcome to Amherst. Yeah, thank you. I grew up in Lincoln, so. Oh. Yep. Good. Nice. Who's the next brave soul? I'll be, I'll be the next victim. I'll go. Oh, go ahead, Terry. Okay, Terry, you up. Hi, um, I moved to Amherst a couple of years ago and I volunteer at the Amherst Senior Center. So that's how I got involved with the Council on Aging. And I worked for Verizon in every clerical position available. And the telephone company has a pioneer project and we make little cloth hug bears And that's what I do in my spare time. And we deliver them to the hospitals for the children and um, and that's it. Here we are. Excellent. Thanks, Terry. Mark? Did we lose everybody? You were there. Okay. Hi, my name is Mark. I'm new to the board. And uh, let's see, my background is basically uh, mostly, mostly computers and media. I worked for 22 and 40 when I was in college. So uh, let's see, I bring project management and a lot of computer background. And basically, uh, I enjoy uh, history and I enjoy reading and I enjoy doing a lot of research. So that's that's sort of my hobbies. Excellent. Yep. We'll be able to put those skills to good use, rest assured, Mark. <laughs> I, I can go. Um, my name is Sarah McComb. I uh, returned to Amherst about a year and a half ago. I lived here for 10 years, many years ago. Um, I'm an industrial engineer. That's uh, my professional expertise. I've been a professor for the last almost 25 to 30 years um, on different faculties. I was at UMass when we were here before. Um, but I'm retiring now, so this is my next chapter, and I'm looking for ways to get involved in the community, and I'm really excited about um, some of the things that are possible with the Center on Aging. Excellent. Is there anything you'd like to share with us in terms of what you enjoy? Oh, sure. 
I love I love to travel. I love good food, and good food could be anything from really good street food to fine dining. It just has to be good. Um, and um, I'm excited that as we're coming out of COVID, we can start traveling again and seeing seeing the world. So that's yeah. what about me. Excellent, excellent. <clears throat> Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, I guess that leads me next. I am a post-retiree from the University of Massachusetts. I'm a post-retiree worker, meaning I'm still working. I work two part-time positions as an instructor um, at a community college and a case, a case manager in a nonprofit. I enjoy gardening. I enjoy painting, um, history, and museums. And I am a cookie monster. <laughs> and um, I see we have various technology persons, but I'm not a programmer or anything like that. I'm a teacher of technology, how to use technology efficiently. And that's it. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Christina. Haley? Yes. Well, I do want to point out there's a phone number here that I'm hoping is Jacqueline's. So if yep. she wants to jump in at any point. Otherwise, I'm probably going to mute the person. But um, yeah. So anyway, uh, that my is background. Her that, that is, is her, her phone? phone number. Okay. Yeah. I was hoping that I didn't promote somebody who had no business being <laughs> promoted. <laughs> so that's good. Uh, um, yeah, Jacqueline, I'll you can go first. You. I'll go after you. Okay. Um, so my background is a lot of senior center work, having been the director here for about a year and a half. And then prior to that, about three years in Bernardston. And then before that was just human service work, you know, Craig's Doors, uh, the survival center. Um, so that's my background. I majored in psych and minored in philosophy, which definitely comes in handy working with people quite a bit. So I, I think that keeps me grounded in a lot of ways and gives me a good sense of humor. Um, what do I like? I like craft beer. I like Vietnamese food and I'm a true crime junkie. So, I'm Jacqueline Smith Crooks and um, I'm a returnee to the Amherst area. I was away for almost 20 something years and have been back almost 20 years. I um, retired from doing work at Harvard, uh, the School of Medicine and working around issues of diversity and community. I have a passion for helping to empower people, helping people empower themselves advocate for themselves, educate themselves, and a holistic approach to health uh, maintenance, not only for other people, but also for myself. I like having, spending time engaged in the contemplative, uh, used to be yoga, and now I, I've settled for reading and, and, um, relaxation and contemplative lifestyling. One of the things I also have a side passion for is um, making old things new. Uh, I worked, um, volunteered with Habitat for Humanity and served on the board for a while. And I got the biggest kick out of being able to see things made um, from throwaways, and that ha that has been with people as well. The discards and the disinherited, I like being uh, present with them as they uncover and rediscover the essence of who they are, the beauty of who they are. I enjoy art, uh, lectures, poetry, uh, dancing, um, among other things. Excellent. Traveling, I really have uh, spent uh, a little time traveling over um, the borders, I, uh, Mexico, and, and I especially loved uh, going to African countries 
and Caribbean countries and living, doing uh, homestays, living where the people live and finding out how they live, not as onlook, are being onlookers, but being active participants in their daily lives. And I think that's enough for now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing. That was wonderful. I have to say, I learned a lot. <laughs> so. Thank you. More to come in at some point in the future when we are um, able to meet in person. I think that's just going to um, go a long way in helping us get to know one another even better. And we'll do our best on Zoom until then. All right. Um, oh, 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 I forgot to tell you, I am a grandmama. I'm Mima by my three grand children by my daughter and I have a grandson who will be two in September. He, he lives in the Boston area. The others are in Miami. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I do feel obliged since you brought up grandchildren. I am the proud grandma of one beautiful granddaughter who's 20 months and cute as a button if I do say so myself. Yeah, yeah. I know the feeling. I know the I describe her as pure joy, but enough on that for now. Um, hopefully you all got a copy of the agenda and I am going to reorder our agenda. So I, I hope you're all good with that. But I thought in fairness to our new members, I want to give you a little grounding. Um, so we're going to start with Haley's director's update and then we will be tackling old um, and new business. So hopefully that doesn't screw everybody up, but Haley, if you could kind of bring us up to speed yeah. with what's going on. Be happy to. So June statistics, um, I figured I would just summarize them, to make it a little easier and save time. So our check-in count for the month was up by 40%. We had 840 people sign in at the senior center. That's a duplicated number, so it'll include people who came multiple times during that span. Um, but that was really nice. We had about 600 the month prior, so that's a nice healthy boost for us. I'm assuming part of that is, you know, we didn't do as much programming in May. There were holidays, there was um, multiple graduations in town, and that does tend to take away from the traffic to the senior center when people don't want to go downtown. Mm -hmm. um, our average daily was 38 people. Um, the people that we served, um, we served almost 300 individual people, which is up 30% from the month before. So again, really nice trend of increased activity. Um, the programming attendance was up about 90%. So we had almost 600 people attend various programs throughout the course of the month, which is amazing. Um, our rides have more than doubled from what they were last month. Um, we did 62 rides, the majority of which were grocery shopping, which is kind of a surprise to me, um, but that has um, pretty consistently been the number one need that we're seeing. And, um, but I'm really, I'm pleased that people are utilizing the service. Um, you know, Rob, Rob is very happy to be doing rides. Uh, he loves connecting with people when they're in the van. Uh, Maureen similarly is very enthusiastic about booking rides for the Silver Shuttle. And um, we have had some people say that they wouldn't be able to get to various doctor's appointments if they didn't have this van. So it clearly is meeting a really critical need in the community. Um, so that's that's kind of it in a nutshell. You know, the, the ride service is the, the newest thing that we're offering. And you know, if we already have 62 rides for the month of June, I only see that steadily increasing. Um, that That's not likely to, to go down, especially once people start being comfortable with using it and they build a rapport with our driver and our dispatcher. Um, so those are all really good signs. Um, Sorry, can I interrupt yeah. one sec? Just for the clarification for new folks. So the Silver Shuttle is a new program and did it start, it started in the middle of May? I think we started it the start of May. Yeah, so, and if, if, if you don't know, I will back up and people can always stop me for questions. Um, we needed a van service. We were able to acquire a retired PBTA van, which is what we use to drive. So that it comes with a wheelchair lift. So we can take two individuals in wheelchairs and six passengers, um, people and walkers can also use the van easily. 
Um, we're using currently ARPA funds to pay our driver and we operate three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, nine to three. So the hours are limited. Um, and one thing that I can kind of highlight, um, I was working with PVTA on a grant application. So I say I, they did most of the, the legwork on it, um, but if we are successful in getting these funds, it would mean the ability to operate a five day a week service. So we would have Monday through Friday rides, and PVTA is also looking at doing um, an Amherst to Greenfield connection. So for people who, because we currently are just serving Amherst, Hadley, and Northampton, so people who need that ride to Franklin County would then have an option. Um, so I, I really want to thank Paul Burns for reaching out about that opportunity. You know, hopefully his ears are ringing now, um, because if we are successful in getting that grant, it'll greatly increase our service capacity. And not only will be, we'll be able to do five days a week, we can hire another part-time driver, we can hire another transportation um, dispatcher uh, to book rides. So it would it would really help round out the service. And um, I wanted to, because I was asked, uh, give a brief plug to Highland Valley Elder Services. They are looking for board of director nominations. So it doesn't have to be you, it might be someone you know, um, but if anyone's interested, they should reach out um, by the end of September. And I can, if you have any more questions about it, I don't wanna take up too much time at this meeting, but you can let me know. Um, they do this pretty much every year. They look for um, various councils on aging um, to be a part of their board of directors. And it's a nice way to kind of have some more influence or have some more connection to Highland Valley in a way that might benefit us from a policy and program standpoint. So that's my plug for that. Um, any questions so far on anything? Cool. Um, I wanna talk about events. So we have quite a number of things uh, coming up. Um, Looking ahead to the fall, we're gonna be doing another volunteer fair on the town common. That was a pretty big success. And the idea behind doing it in the fall is that we can then incorporate students and get a bit more traction. Um, it was a really great way to bring together local human resource um, organizations and also town committees who were looking for volunteers when we first did this event back in May, May or June. Um, it was the first time that the town had ever put on a volunteer fair. So we got to break some ground there. Um, and we'll do that again this fall. We're also gonna be doing a health fair, um, pulling together some various health resources for individuals. Um, we'll be doing that in October, tie in with open enrollment. Uh, you know, when people are looking to go on Medicare or change their plans or anything health related, we'll be doing that fair in October. Um, and then the big one that we do, Community Safety Day will be happening next month, um, Saturday, August 12th from 10 to two at Mill River. Um, I have put together a pretty great lineup. Um, the fire department, the police department, CRESS, um, Office of DEI, Public Health, Senior Services, DA's office, UMass PD, Hampshire County Sheriff, uh, Amherst College PD. Everyone will be on site. Um, I think Tapestry Health will be there as well, um, just to promote public safety, public safety awareness, education, um, give people an opportunity to get them to meet their first responders. Um, if you don't know, about a third of all 911 calls are for older adults. So to me, it's really important that people have an opportunity to know someone that might be showing up at their house in the event of an emergency. Um, a great activity to bring grandkids to, to bring the whole family. We will have a face painter, a DJ. Um, we've got a touch a truck. So all the public safety vehicles will be there. You can get to, you know, sit in the fire engine, get your picture taken. Um, we'll have comfort dogs. The fire department will show how they use the jaws of life. So they'll actually be cutting up car doors. Um, they demonstrate how they use canine dogs. There's car seat inspections. There, there's a lot. And um, La Vera Cruzana will be our food vendor. So we'll have good food as well. Um, it's just a really fun event for all ages. Um, we'll have file of life on hand to distribute to anyone who wants it. And that, if you don't know, is um, a little red folder you can put on your fridge with all your, your medications, all your emergency contact info. Um, we have a example of an emergency bag that we'll um, have on display for people. I've got some senior center swag. Um, last year we had, um, like 300 people, 375, somewhere in that ballpark. 
So I'd like to see that same number, if not more. Um, it's a really good way to just get our name out there, get our, you know, who we are and touch base with people. And it's fun, it's a lot of fun. Um, so we'll be doing that the second weekend in August. Um, and, and oh, oh, the other thing was I was on Mass Appeal to talk about it. I, um, I'll take your question in just a second, Mark, but you know, another publicity for the Senior Center. Um, so we are, we're getting some eyes on it, uh, which is really exciting that people are paying attention to the things that we're doing. Uh, and what was your question? So this is a quick one. Um, yeah. Is it possible to have a either a group of us from the COA there that day? Yes. Some some people have already committed. I know Jean will be there. Dennis okay. will be taking pictures. Um, <laughs> so yeah, anyone who wants to come, you just show up. I I will be on site at about eight a.m. You can come closer to nine or ten. Um, but yeah, I would love to see people come and you know just even if you just want to hang out and get some good food and enjoy some music. That's Perfectly fine. Okay. Thank you. I would um, actually encourage everybody to go if you can, if you're in town. It really is. Um, it was a lot of fun last year. And yes, it I was. expect we're going to have even more people. I, I did catch your segment, Haley. You did an awesome yes. job. Thank you. You're in, in front of the screen. Um, but you did make me laugh when you, you said wicked three times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got to rep Eastern Mass whenever possible, you know. <laughs> Jean, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, is it possible for us to actually have a table there? Yeah. A phone the oh, council so agent? Let me just be really clear. I created the event. I am the founder. I don't like to brag, but it's our event. So we have a table. We, ha we have two okay. tables, a tent. Huh. We have everything. So yeah, this, this is a senior center driven experience. Yeah, there's a possibility. You might need three tables, Haley, but we'll oh, see. Oh, I got six total. Yeah. Don't even don't even worry about it. <laughs> I'll jam them full of stuff. Um, the other event that we're doing are ice cream socials. I, oh, I'll take your question first, Christina. You're on mute. Is there uh, all of these things in our newsletter? Is there? Yes. Yep. It's gonna it all was, be there. Yeah, it was originally slated for June, but that weekend was horrible. We had like a ton of storms, so I ended up postponing it. Um, it will be up, we'll be doing some more press releases. We'll be putting up the, the video for Mass Appeal up on our socials and then the police department programs, um, you know, on those like electronic sign boards, they'll put like community safety day, such and such a day. So yeah, we, we definitely do. Um, Cause yeah, I, I want a good turnout. I like, like to have a lot of people there. Um, ice cream socials are happening every Friday from one to two at the senior center. I thank you to the friends group because we recently bought a deep um, chest freezer and now we will be able to store the five gallons of ice cream that Barstow's uh, dairy farm is donating to us. So big shout out to Barstow's. Thank you for the ice cream. Um, we didn't, we were just using residential freezers and it definitely is not enough for five gallons of ice cream. So we've greatly expanded our capacity. Um, the socials are nice because I'll usually reach out to various other departments in town and just try to have um, you know town officials come and connect with, with our seniors, with people coming to the center. Obviously you are all more than welcome to come for one or all, however much ice cream you can handle. Um, so that'll be going on till the, till the last Friday in August really. Um, other big things. So we are getting a new patio. They've now done the, um, all the concrete is laid. So once they're finished, we will have a beautiful new patio on the side of room 101, which is that build that room that's um, on the, the Johnny side of the building. There will be an awning, there will be tables and chairs. It will look beautiful. Um, we'll finally have a really nice dedicated outdoor space by the bank center, which I'm so thrilled about. Um, and I, I hope that they're finishing up soon. I don't believe it will take, you know, I think by the end of the summer, we can expect to have that up. I would be surprised if it took much longer, but, um, but we'll see. And speaking of new buildings, just to remind everyone and for anyone tuning in who does not know that on Monday, July 17th, the Amherst Town Council will be meeting to consider the use of the town's remaining ARPA funds. One of the things that the town manager has suggested is to renovate our kitchen. 
do an exercise space, kind of redo the first floor of the bang center to, you know, we're not realistically gonna get a new senior center, but we can get some upgrades made to the building and make it a lot easier to conduct programs. It'll make it a lot more welcoming. It'll make it a much better space um, and certainly more usable, which was a big thing that I had talked with him about and he's been very supportive of. Um, so COA put out a letter, anyone watching, call your town counselor, call either the at-large counselors or um, you know, reach out to your individual district counselor and let them know that you think this is a wonderful, wonderful idea. We are so happy that uh, the town manager has put this as a goal for those ARPA funds, because if we make a big enough wave, I think um, we'll, we'll get these you know, this use of funds, um, you know, I know that several town counselors, you know, in addition to the town manager have voiced their support for this. So I think we just really want to add to that and really bring it home that this is something that we want and would be really good for the community. Because again, there's over 5,500 older adults who live in Amherst and the current senior center is not, um, not the best tailored to, to serve that 5,500. I would and say that, that's what Mildly, Haley. It's, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's Put democratically so this, while I'm on camera. Um, no, I think, you know, I think people know that it needs to be changed. And I think this this is a perfect opportunity for those funds. And Paul has listened and has been very supportive. So, yeah. So I encourage all of you to share that support and tell your counselors so that when they go into that meeting, they know for a fact. Or you can join them. Um, I think it'll be hybrid either, um, I think they start at six o'clock, so it'll be in the town room or virtually on Zoom and you can make a public comment. So either one would be fine. And that's about all I had to say. Um, I wanna definitely at our next meeting review the Agent Dementia Action Plan that was developed by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. So they did a, a really lengthy but very detailed um, report on the kind of the state of aging and aging in Amherst. Um, there are numerous action plan items, some of which we're already doing, so we can happily check those off. Um, but there are several different domains that I think we can best target, you know, social participation, technology, transportation is one that we can certainly have been working on and can continue to work on. So once we've had a a time to have a meeting as a group once and then you know get acquainted with one another i'd like to steer our attention to that action plan next time and that's all i had okay again just for um for dawn mark and sarah we will get you copies of the age and dementia plan um actually maybe we could try to do that sooner rather than later because it's fairly lengthy so you can plow through that prior to our next meeting. Um, and I can't remember, are the, the action items, some sections are prioritized? I think. Some are, there, there's a lot. To be honest, there's a lot of action items. Like for example, if we have a section on transportation, there might be three subsections. And then in those subsections, there could be like, six or seven action items. So to think that we can do them all is probably a stretch, um, but we can, you know, we can cross off the ones we're already doing and then look to, I'd, I'd say recommend, you know, easy wins at first and then kind of branch off as we get more progressively in depth of what we need to do. Yeah. Because there's a lot to tackle. Yeah. But we'll definitely get the, the full report out to you so you can plow through it prior to our next meeting when we can talk about action items. Um, I just want to go backwards here. You were like plowing ahead, Haley. So I didn't want to. I'm on a roll today. Yeah, I do. <laughs> they are. Um, I would like to make a pitch for us to volunteer to support these programs. Certainly safety day. It would be awesome. Again, for anybody who's around, if you can help staff the table or just, you know, be around, that would be wonderful. It is a lot of fun. Um, and it, it, you know, there's something for everyone there. So um, again, you're gonna, I learned a lot last year and uh, I'm sure I'll learn even more this year. Um, so if anybody can join us for that, please, please let us know. We will be delighted mm -hmm. to have you. Um, yes, and you don't have to stay the whole time unless you want to. You know, sometimes when you're volunteering, you know, you have to kind of be incremental. Don't give all your time all at once. Um, but Jean's right, there is something for everyone. 
if you if you have a couple hours to spend. Yeah. The ice cream social, I thought it would be really nice if as council on aging, we picked a date um, that would be kind of the council on aging ice cream social. Um, and I was just wondering um, if there was a, a date that would work well with folks. I appreciate not everybody um, will probably be able to do this due to your other obligations, but um, for folks, for the rest of us, what do you think? I thought it would be fun if we, we came together as, as a group for a ice cream social. You mean for social, uh, social reasons and also for, for consuming ice cream? Yeah, you gotta have ice cream while you're there. Yeah. I'm Gina, always yeah. It sounds like a nice idea to finally do something, finally get together for real. Yes. Are you talking in addition to the Fridays, Gene? No. <clears throat> at, at, pick one of the Friday dates. And so that could be. Um, are you doing other advertising for those, Haley? For the I mean, we definitely person? can. If you pick one that's in October. August, then I would have more time to publicize. Like we could do a little press release in the Gazette, and I can have Phyllis put it in her column. So honestly, August would probably be your better date. Like if you wanted to do the 11th or the 18th, that gives me ample time to get that in the paper and put it up on Facebook. Yeah, I was kind of thinking August just because we're halfway through July already. Um, so, what do folks think? I agree. Yeah, same here. Which we, one do you want? At, are we looking at the 11th of, uh, of August mm -hmm. for an ice cream social? Yeah. Wouldn't it be better to wait one week after the safety day? Well, <clears throat> it's just going to yeah. be a busy day. <laughs> I know. The 11th is my anniversary, though. So I'm gonna oh, go okay. Want to go for the 18th? Yeah, I'd more yeah. like to be able to be there on the 18th or the 25th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Let me know if anyone has, um, if you need non-dairy or low sugar ice cream so that I can get it. Um, okay. What will the hours be? It's one to two. One to two on the 18th. Mm -hmm. okay. In room 101. Plugging it in right now. Awesome. Okay, wonderful. Well. As many of us who can attend, that would be tremendous. Um, oh. I think it would be fun for us and it would be wonderful for our community to connect with them as well. Yeah. Maybe, oh, maybe if we're really lucky, the patio will be done and we can sit outside. Ooh. Keep my fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. that would be tremendous. Um, the other thing I just wanted to reiterate is our, our pitch to our town councilors. This is a golden opportunity for us to get some serious upgrades, which I think will go a long way um, in helping in, in attracting people into banks and for folks who are utilizing banks, feeling good about it. Um, and also the addition of exercise room, which we don't currently have. Um, so, as Haley said, mentioned, we did um, do a joint letter out to all the town councilors from the Council on Aging for all of you who, you know, graciously gave me your permission to list your names. Um, I just want to say I've done individual letters to my councilors and my at-large folks and been trying to encourage other people in my network to do the same. So if you, if you already have, I thank you. If you haven't yet, done so, if you can possibly make the time, shoot them an email, I think it will really make a difference. I think they need to hear from us and know that, you know, we're, we're concerned and, and care about this. Um, and I do think it would be great if anybody is able to attend the meeting Monday evening. Um, unfortunately, I cannot commit to that, but um, yeah, Maybe unfortunately, I'll be out. Of, I'm out of state, so I did send in my letter um, a couple of days ago. I emailed the letter and oh, nice. the public comment. So awesome! Thank you, Mark. See, I I was planning on watching the meeting online, mm -hmm. but I don't know whether or not I should say anything. This is a question to everybody: Do I recognize myself as somebody from the COA, or just as a person who from is the audience? I think 
there's I don't see any reason why you couldn't. I mean, it, you're you're mm -hmm. already identified as a COA member on the town website, so it's not. And I've know. sent I sent the emails to everybody, so they'll probably they might recognize the name <laughs> anyway. I just okay. don't want to get anybody in trouble. <laughs> no. Okay. I mean, as long as you're not being. No, no, no. I just yeah, you know, when just they like ask a normal you, comment. Yeah. yeah, if they ask you your name or whatever, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I think it's great too. It's thank you for going because that does help a lot. Yeah. Okay. Again, I think it's just another. It just reinforces that you know we care. We're on it. We you know we we appreciate their support. So um, hopefully, it makes it harder. It makes it easier to say yes. So. And if anyone else's schedule changes and you're able to attend, I heartily encourage you to do so. I, I'm really hoping that um, they come through with money because that would be will, will this be the, the, the 17th at uh, Town Hall at what, seven o'clock? Yeah, here, I'll check the town website because I think they have a post up already. Six thirty. Six thirty. Okay. Yep. Yeah, town council meeting is mm -hmm. basically what is that second floor? Mm -hmm. The main room, right? Oh yeah, the, it'll be in the town room or virtually if you, you know you don't have to physically be there, um, but it'll be at six thirty. Actually, I might not. I'm kind of thinking it might be a good idea to. Uh, to actually be physically present as, as much as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. um, it gets their attention. Yep. That's my, it's been my experience. Yeah, yeah. That would be great, Dennis. Yeah. Thank uh, you. So let's, if actually, if I, I'll, I'll ask uh, as uh, all of you, as, as many as possible to show up physically at the, uh, at the town room uh, at 6.30 on, uh, on Monday and, and uh, let uh, let them see us uh, standing there, and and uh, it reminds me of a of a something that happened a long time ago. There was an unusually difficult neighborhood in Worcester that was having a lot of of crime, heavy crime problems, and uh, a, a, a father and son janitor team from uh, Holy Cross, from the College of the Holy Cross, decided to uh, gather up the neighbors and go to uh, go to City Hall. And complained at a, at a city council meeting, and members of the city council and the mayor were so shocked, and it it basically spurred a, uh, a really ser serious cleanup of the neighborhood. As a result, it worked really really well, and I think if they if they see us standing there, it's it's a lot harder to say no. Yeah, and that's also how the Hadley Senior Center got their new building. <laughs> people people went to town meetings and they advocated. So that's right. So. Let's, there's a valuable lesson there. I think we should keep it in mind. Yeah, absolutely. Mark? I just had a question, a question for Haley. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to uh, maybe make up a, a little flyer that we can pass out to everybody that goes into the senior center about the meeting? Mm -hmm. Because I noticed the other day I was talking to a lot of people and they didn't seem to know about it. So I was like, maybe we could I can do some for like, I can probably have that ready by like Friday midday and then we can hand them out yeah, with like our, the, our lunches on Monday and- you just have it available lunch. on that table and then, you know, yeah, yeah because it's it's um, it's just something they can walk away with. Mm -hmm. and, oh, you know, definitely. And, and um, sort of I thing. actually, I did go in front of a couple classes to, to talk about the meeting that that was happening. And I know Julia had sent out an email to all our volunteers yeah, we telling got them that. about yeah. it. And, yeah. Um, so yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. But I do think something in writing is a good reminder because we all have a lot going oh, yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Now we're going to jump to old business and something that, um, we desperately need is a new secretary. Terry has graciously been covering us for, I don't know how long. I'm sure to you, Terry, it seems like an eternity, but. A year and a half. <laughs> Who's counting? The pen, <laughs> as it were. So um, 
Could you just briefly let folks know? I mean, I, I, I'm assuming most folks know what it, what it entails, but a quick overview of what you do, how much time well, it takes. I take, the, I take the minutes of what Haley is talking about and who's here, who's not here, who's a guest. And then I type it up and send it out to everybody. Okay. So you don't copy the agenda word for word you add in. So you're kind of like typing your own new letter about what was said and what is happening, et cetera. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. And I will help you go through it um, if you're interested. And I can, you know, work with you to make sure you understand what to do. Excellent. All right. And you have three weeks to type it and send it out before the next meeting. So everybody can look at it. Yeah. Uh, one thing you could also do is you could have your laptop open and just be typing as we're talking and then you've already done it by the end of the meeting. If you're taking your own notes, you can just share them. Um, if nobody wants to fill the void, may I recommend that we just take turns? We, as in the council, just take turns amongst yourself. You know, maybe one person does it every two months and then you rotate. Um, that way it's not falling on any particular person. Um, but again, I mean, if, if you have your laptop and you just take notes as we're having the meeting, you can be done literally by 6.35 and just send it to me and that's at the end of it. I, I might interject and I might be off, but I thought mm -hmm. that there had been some discussion uh, trying to get somebody to get paid to do that. Uh, when, in, when I came aboard a uh, couple or three years ago, so that there would be consistency in the taking of the minutes. I would have to check with Paul because I don't know that we can pay for something like that. I've not, I've not personally heard of any other councils doing that. And then it becomes a question of how do we pay that person? You know, it would, we don't have any funding uh, yeah, at the well, senior center. I, but... I, I can't, it was uh, a discussion with the, with the leadership team okay, um, about somehow compensating the person who takes a minute for the sake of consistency. And to my recollection, because things changed so much in our lives with uh, COVID, mm -hmm. the focus shifted away from that. But I think that that's what one of the things that was being advocated for. Okay, yeah, I mean, I can definitely check with him because I, like I said, I'm just not sure legally how that works. You know, like if you're a volunteer committee, I don't know that, I don't know if you can be paid, but I will certainly ask him and find that information out. And, you know, that might be a good solution if we can identify a source of funds um, for that. So yeah, I'll check in with him and see what he has to say. In the meanwhile, is there anybody who would like to be able to add this to your resume? Another wonderful experience. I'd be willing to take it on for the next two months. And if we're gonna go with a rotation, I'll start. Awesome, thank you so much, Dawn. I think the rotation is a rather good idea. Mm. Yeah. Fred. Because Fred. it's hard. Everybody has their own style. That's true. You mm -hmm. know, and I guess it's people are familiar with my notes because I've been doing it for a year and a half. But like if Don did it for two months, he might have a different style and might not add some things or add too much. And then say Jean did it you know, and her style is differently. So it's, I think that's kind of hard. Yeah. But so whatever works. And, Just, and the other thing is that I think uh, seniors get um, 
there it may not be monetary pay, but there's compensation for doing providing services to the um, town on their taxes, a tax um, reduction. Yeah, if you're doing the yeah. senior tax work off program, so yeah, that's hours. different. Yeah. That's different than I, the I, it's, it's been so long since we discussed it, and, and the whole the whole committee was new to me, so I tucked it away someplace, and I can't tell you verbatim what, what, what happened. The Council on Aging is different than the senior tax work off program. They, you know. Yeah, it, it, it should really fall on council members to, to take right. the minutes. Um, right. You know, that that's that's part of being on a committee is that you may have to do roles like that. Um, you know, I, I personally, like I said, I've just never heard of another council on aging doing it that way either through tax work off or people being paid. Um, you know, if you're a volunteer committee, you know, you are all here volunteering your time in the service of the town seniors. Um, and, and that requires doing things like minutes on occasion or, you know, um, showing up to meetings and volunteering at the center, those sorts of things. Um, but, you know, I think Terry, just to your point about different styles, I mean, at the end of every meeting, we have to approve the minutes so even if folks have different styles, you can make an addition or you can make a subtraction. Um, right. And I think it would it would be just a good stopgap way to ensure that everybody's taking a fair share of what is usually people's least favorite job on any committee. Right. Yeah. You know, just, I can answer any questions or help you do it or whatever. And for clarity purposes, Terry, you're going to cover us this month, and Dawn will pick it up August, September. Correct? Terry? If, if that's what you would like. Yeah, I, I would like to not have my first meeting be something I haven't already. <laughs> yes, I'm already behind. Put it that way, so. Well, thank you for stepping up. It is appreciated. And Dennis, too. Before yeah. we, you know, make sure that's in the minutes that I'll, <laughs> yeah, I'll do it after I'll do it after Don. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Oh, Dennis. All right. Thank you. Right. As Thank as you. Uh, as Terry says, there'll there'll be a difference in style. Uh, I do the minutes of uh, uh, for the for the friends as the secretary, oh. and I so I've got my way of doing things. But ultimately, the most important thing is is that they be approved. Mm -hmm. And right. to get out in a timely right. manner so that anybody who's got any objections can actually uh, have, if they've got am, uh, corrections or amplifications, uh, that they get them in before the meeting so that we can just move the whole thing through smoothly, which is what we do with the friends. Right. That's it. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for thank you for for everything you've done, Terry. It, uh, yes. it, the year mm -hmm. and a half, I thought you did a fine yeah. job. And, and yeah. thank you very much, Dennis. It's appreciated. Yeah. Yes, it, yeah, it's appreciated. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, thank you, people. All right. Next, uh, under old business, we have um, our annual calendar, and that was something that we introduced at the last meeting, and. I made some um, changes to the draft that I wanted to share with all of you um, and see if there were other things, if the changes looked fine, if there were other things that we should be adding at this point. But um, as I said last month, I, I like to know kind of what direction we're going in. Um, I feel like this is gonna help us be much more organized in terms of planning what we need to do so that when things are coming up, an event is coming up that we've, you know, planned for it previous uh, meeting. Um, so it's month by month. Um, and Haley, can you move it up on the screen a little bit? You mean up? Up. So we can so see we can more see August. Um, if we, do you want me, oh, so you want me to just move it down? Oh, Keep January okay. through that? Because I was trying to make it so that the font was nice and big. Yeah, okay. All right, actually, let's go, yeah, go down. Let's look from um, July on, since that's where we're at right now. Yeah. 
So um, this summer we, you know, we'll be doing the ice cream social. Although that that will be August. We've got community safety day, which we've already talked about, and the age and dementia action plan review. This is a huge. Um, a, a huge plan. And so I have listed the age and dementia action plan review for two times throughout the year because I feel like it would behoove us. We, I don't think we can tackle the entire thing in um, one meeting. So my suggestion was to do it twice a year. Again, if folks have other thoughts or suggestions with regards to that, I, I welcome hearing them. Anybody have anything right now? I don't know how we do this because I can't see you all now. I can see people. So if you raise your hand, I can definitely on my screen. And Mark has his hand up. Okay, to speak? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I did have a request from somebody who wants to sort of stay anonymous. So they asked me if they could put a suggestion to the Council on Aging forward. So this is not me, this is somebody else asking. Um, they would like to know whether or not the Council on Aging uh, could have, and I don't know if it's possible, uh, like quarterly open meetings where people from the senior community could come and voice concerns and or opinions. And that was voiced, I think, because they felt they weren't comfortable, I guess this person's not comfortable approaching maybe Haley or somebody else. They just wanted to know whether or not there was a possibility of doing something like this. So I'm throwing it out there and I want to throw in possibly, is it possible to have a like a suggestion box available? where people could, I guess if they want to be anonymous, they could write something, put it in the box, and that Haley could take her time to go through them and address them, that sort of thing. I so can those, answer both those questions. Okay, so all right, go ahead. Yes to the suggestion box. I okay. will order that when I get a chance. And to the quarterly open meeting, every one of our meetings is open to the public. So we do um, a public comment period at the beginning of every meeting. People can ask, well, the, the board won't respond. So if they're thinking about like a dialogue, that, that's not how these meetings typically work, but they can make a comment. They can raise concerns. You can do that at any one of our meetings. If it's virtual or in person, there's always that public comment period. We usually just skip past it because there's never or at least very rarely are there is there anyone who like raises their hand from the public but right. yes to answer that person's question absolutely every meeting is an opportunity to do exactly that i i just think well i i know this particular person was i wanted to just say gun shy mm -hmm. i'll just put it that way and i don't know they wanted to be involved in this meeting you know that we have our meetings especially oh, when okay. we're doing oh sorry let so me they, um I, back up i'm sorry go ahead Public comment, people can express up to three minutes and then that that's it. So they wouldn't be like, it wouldn't be like you as a panelist where you're on screen the whole time. The public comment period, you just say your thoughts, your views up to three minutes and then that's it. Then when the public comment period's over, they would go back into the audience. So maybe, I think that's what you were trying to get at. I think that's maybe. what they were looking for. I'm okay. not, I wasn't overly sure so I okay. thought I'd throw, throw it out and see what you guys come up with and what your thoughts were. I just yeah, want to be able to say to the person that I mentioned it and yeah. that, you know, this is, was aired out to the, you know, to the meeting. Yeah. Mark, do you think it, if we do an ice cream socialist designated for COA, that would um, help meet the need if folks aren't comfortable? I, in I think, well, I mean, I think so because it, and actually it's even better because now it's not just a focused meeting, you know, then there's some little communication and there's a activity going tied to it. Yeah. Right. yeah. So it might actually, it might actually, in quotes, break the ice, <laughs> no mm -hmm. pun intended. Um, but 
I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mark. I, I didn't no, mean to. Well, no, I just I th I think I agree with uh, with Gene where maybe activity. You know, but the, if people know that this, like the people from the council on aging, are going to be there, or at least a couple of representatives or whatever, just so that they could, you know, voice some, bounce some ideas off or of whatever. Um, not everybody's comfortable with everybody. You know, we all have different personalities. So, I'm just trying to think of ways that yeah. we can have a commu communication back and forth. Yeah, yeah. If, if I may can hear, I? Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I think you were next. Okay, thank you very much. Um, when, when uh, Jean, when you raised the idea, when you were talking about the ice cream social, I, uh, I was, uh, in the back of my mind, I was thinking that it would also present a really, really nice opportunity uh, for some, uh, some for, to do two different things. And, and one would be, it would present a really sweet opportunity for Haley and a couple of other people to present all the things that the senior center does in terms of the classes that are being offered and all the other activities so that it would be a little bit more structured and also that it would also open the lines of communication between anyone in the audience who would have any questions or suggestions on what happens at the senior center, especially now that it would appear that the structure of the senior center is changing a little bit with the kitchen and and these these other things and that even though it even in the words of Paul Bockelman these things are essentially stopgap measures that that these are things that that will be happening or we hope will be happening with the ARPA funds um, and and so maybe uh, an ice cream social that would be open to the public and that would have let's say 15 or 20 minutes of, of slightly more structured uh, presentation and feedback would be kind of a nice thing to have. Uh, because the, the, the feeling sometimes that, that I get was, is that I'd like, I'd like a better explanation of the things that are going on. Yeah. yeah. You know, because I do know that they are mm -hmm. going but I'd like a better idea of it. So that's that's my two cents on it. Awesome. Um, I know that Christina has her hands up. Her yeah. Hand. Go for it, Christina. Yes. Um, oh. Did I hear you say, Haley, that this volunteer fair was going to be in September and now I see October on this? Uh, no, this I, um, sorry, I might have misspoke it was definitely going to be in October because UMass starts later now because they go mm -hmm. later in the spring we want to make sure the students are there and that October will be the prime time for that okay all right so I'll I'll change that on my calendar um Do we have a date for the volunteer the other term? thing is that Not yet. the other thing is that we it says specifically um ice cream social with council on aging and that supposedly which one of these the one in july and august is the one where we're going to disseminate information as dennis uh just told just uh expressed that should happen in august so this is a calendar just of like all of our regularly scheduled events so it'll have like um mm -hmm. you know holiday programming for december mm -hmm. the socials happen in july and august but I mm -hmm. really like the idea of doing the the focus one in August. I okay. would even throw out, um, assuming people want to volunteer, you could have C COA office hours at the Bang Center. You know, if there's someone who's interested in just, you know, it can just be a couple hours once a month, um, we could set you up in probably like the bubble room. So it's one-on-one, -on -one, a little bit more confidential. And then that way, anybody can come in. And I think that would probably be from what I'm hearing more appropriate than the, the public comment bit. Um, that might be a better way to, to get that one-on-one -on -one with people, assuming I anyone wants to volunteer. That, that's a great idea because I think this person came to me because they knew I was just getting on the board. Mm -hmm. So they that might be good to let people know that we have sort of a, somebody there that they can talk to or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'd be willing to do that. Oh, yeah. yes. Awesome. I, 
I, I think I think that it sounds like a good way to involve people while uh, conducting surveys would be good. Yeah. There's something that seems so participatory. When when I joined the committee or the council, I I joined what I thought was um, senior services. Uh, and one of the aspects of senior services was the senior center. And to find out instead of engaging in guesswork about, about what might um, be satisfactory, hearing voices, at least I think starting out, giving it a try. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a very fine way to uh, create a space for participatory programming for seniors. Yes. And yeah. the services and programming uh, may not necessarily be the same thing, and we can find out. Right. Yeah. And I think, I think that's a great idea, all of it. And, and I suggest for December, because we're doing Ice Cream Social, right, in August. Mm hmm so in December, why don't we do hot chocolate and cookies? We can do that. We can do a whole hot chocolate bar with like lots of different toppings and make it look really nice. And stop, um, that. stop that. It has to be fancy. <laughs> <laughs> and at some point, I want to get industrial commercial blenders so we can make milkshakes and smoothies. <laughs> so I really want that kitchen because I have a lot of food ideas. Um, but I Wait, will. I just got um, on a diet. Thanks a lot. <laughs> make some healthy stuff too. Healthy can be tasty. Um, I like Don. Thanks for volunteering on that. I'll connect with you because um, like it basically just can't be like the third Thursday or the second Tuesday. But I'll email you, um, and we can advertise it in our September October newsletter because that's the next one that's going to come out. Okay. Yeah, but I, I would you know, also. Be Amenable to doing it, I think. Okay. Um, one thing that when Mark was talking, it just struck me, and that is we need to raise the visibility of the Council on Aging. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people don't yeah. know who we are, they don't know yeah. how to. Us. And so, us being present at various events around town, I think, is really critical. Right. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take a line from you, Haley. I think we need some swag. We need oh, yeah, we know, need swag. COA. I got rid of all the cups. So I bought cups with our logo, color changing, sunglasses, and frisbees. I sold. Well, I didn't sell. We gave them away. But all of them at the Fourth of July. Everyone's walking around with a pink <laughs> senior center cup and bright blue senior center sunglasses. It was amazing. Um, it, so yeah, we do. Need can, can, I'm sorry, I jumped in. Can I speak for a second? Yes. Are uh, you froze? Okay. Oh, there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I just I just wanted to ask: Is there a possibility of either getting like name tags for the COA members, or T-shirts that say "I'm like COA member," so that people can visually at these events can actually. Pick us out. I don't know if that's yes. good or bad. But. <laughs> we can. We could, um, or Dennis could bring the, it up at the next friends meeting that we want to get some specifically designated t shirts yeah, or name tags. We should probably okay. do the same for the friends. Um, I'm sure they have a yeah, target on their back. I'll tell you yeah. what. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Haley, how, how easy is it to get those uh, those lanyards that, that, that you got? So easy. For imprint is like, it's so easy. But like they're, they're very. They're very hard to see the lanyards when people wear them in yeah. I, because I go to a lot of conferences and it's very hard to see a lanyard versus a name tag. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 go ahead. Right. We need more. I think a name tag is, um, it is important, but we need something like a shirt or a hat that's going to be easy to Ooh. makes us more visible. Um, yes. A lanyard, unless you've got great eyes, and if God forbid the event is at yeah. night, see yeah, anything. So, um, yeah. So we need to raise our visibility. I just wanted to throw that out there, so people can be thinking. And if you have any great ideas, we can pass them along. But we're gonna we're gonna circle back. We need some swag, Haley. I'm on it. All right. 
Um, I'm gonna keep plowing through this calendar. Um, September, um, we've got the Amherst Block Party, which again is a huge event in town. Key, wonderful opportunity for COA, again, to be visible, to have a table. So we need not only, um, you know, volunteers to staff the table, but we'll need stuff to distribute. So I invite you all to give thought to what would make sense for COA to have at a table at a block party or, or other, other events. Mark? No, oh, no sorry, Christina, Christina had her hand up first. Yeah, she's got I'm sorry. Face. I can only see one little person. On my... That's why I'm keeping don't, you in check. Don't okay. worry about it. I, we already know that and she's helping you. Um, the thing that I think people really like hats. I know I do. I don't care. I get t-shirts from everywhere and I don't like wearing t-shirts that say things. I feel mm -hmm. like what Don said, you're mm -hmm. like a target, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I just rather not have words on my body. I don't like tattoos or anything like that either. Um, I love hats. I think people like hats. Um, I think people like, you know, those little tiny things that you put counsel on aging and you stick them on your refrigerator mm -hmm. for whatever reason, individuals love that kind of stuff. You can pick it up. People love pens. Mm -hmm. Just things that they, small things, but for them it's meaningful. And 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 people love Frisbees. You know, you might have a, a young, a family that has children, uh, a senior that has grandchildren and they go, oh, Frisbee. Can I take two for my grandson? You know, those kind of things. Are you a baseball hat or like a like a mesh hat person? What style I, do you like? I like the mesh type. The mesh. I love okay. those. <laughs> I have quite a few. Dennis, right. he has his on. <laughs> <laughs> I have right. some. I should just grab it and put it on. <laughs> I didn't mean to not, uh, Marks, not, not support you for your t-shirts. No, we that's not. We could it have a few bother. of those too. I'm not into it, but we could have a few of those too. It doesn't bother me as long as we have something visible visible for them. Yeah. The other thing I was going to ask is, is I don't even know if we have one. Do we have like a banner that we could put on the front of a table? That's actually yeah. you know, you know, do we have that available? Mm -hmm. We have it. It's very tasteful, um, hunter green with a lighter green accent. Um, so we have that. I would also encourage people as they're thinking about swag to think about the types of events that we do. Like if it's an outdoor event, we probably want those Frisbees. We probably want summer e-things, sunscreen packets versus if we're just distributing something at like a health fair where maybe we want to do like little tiny first aid kits or um, like those jar grippers, magnifying glasses, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you can definitely think about it in terms of like what event we should brand and then ultimately it'll come down to price no matter what but um most of it's pretty inexpensive okay are there any other hands Haley no okay all right so the other thing that we have in September is the AARP grant ideas um it's the um, now I'm going to totally blank on what is AARP everybody knows AARP right yeah Okay, um, so they put out a grant and um, I discovered, I learned about it last year too late. It was like, you know, two weeks before it was due. The grant, um, I believe I've got to go back and, and pull the guidelines. We obviously missed it for last year, but I want to put it on our calendar because this is, as far as I'm concerned, free money and there's lots of wonderful things we could do with this. So. Um, I believe it's up to $5,000 they'll award you, but you obviously have to do your due diligence and um, write up your proposal and, and whatnot. So Is this it, I, Jean? Um, Just real quick. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. The community challenge. So um, 
want us to start talking about it in September and brainstorm ideas and um, want to give us time to mull them over so that later in the fall we can make a finalize what we want to go for so that we then have sufficient time to um, gather all the information needed for the, the grant application. And I'm guessing probably the grant would come from your office, Haley, but certainly we could do, do a support some, letter and stuff like that. And yeah, yeah, give you some information and whatnot. Um, so and the first hand I see is Mark's. I'm so sorry. I was just wondering, could you send this link to us so we could read about it maybe? Yeah. Just so, so we could be a little familiar of what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You know, one thing I would just say to that, Mark, is I just happen to get this because I'm a member. If any of you are seeing opportunities for other grants that we potentially could go for, please share them. Um, Cause I think there's, there's lots we, we need and should be doing. Sarah? Uh, Haley, do you know what percentage of the 5,500 seniors might be veterans? Because that was one of the organ, mm -hmm. I was thinking there might be veterans money that we could tap if that was, uh, because there's um, often grants for those. That was just a random thought I had. Uh, I don't often have my head no. I know that Amherst has a lower proportion of veterans than other communities, but I could certainly ask um, the Veterans Affair Office that's next door to us um, if they have a figure. Yeah, it's a great idea. Okay. I should say, I feel obligated to say in my own best interest, that grants are something that we do want to be judicious about because they do require, especially depending on how much, if it's a lot of money, a lot of time to write, a lot of time to report, a lot of time to monitor. Um, you know, not, there's no free lunch. We all know this. So I think sometimes it's really tempting to go after every possibility. And I think this one's a great one. So I, this is not in reference to the AARP grant, but we do want to be, we want to think about, you know, what can we, realistically try to write and monitor and report on and, and um, implement just as a as a, as a heads up for me because yeah. ultimately I, I have to write them well and I, I think it sounds like there's a few of us on here that would be happy yeah. to help I mean I, I oh, perfect so I, I'd be happy to help with things like that I also think we should be strategic and think about what as we think about writing the grant what might the reporting be and how could we make that as simple and as streamlined as possible. I mean, are there certain things that could just be recorded as they happen so that it's just a matter of pulling data and dumping it into a pretty standardized template? So I think there are ways to streamline some of that to make it as easy as possible for you. And I think oh, thank you. Think about we could think about those things even as we're writing the grant so that we know how, you know, how to make it this isn't to you don't need the money to make your life that much more difficult. So I think it's everything needs to fit together. Oh, thank you. That was perfect. <laughs> I appreciate that. Excellent point. Yeah. And my my suggestion, keep your eyes open, is more just um, not that we will go for everything, but if we learn of things that maybe we go for next year or you know, oh, definitely. I can tell you, um, like MCOA usually has several grant opportunities every year. We got their service incentive award this year. Typically that focuses on like outreach, um, either in communication and a lot of times they'll fund caregiver support grants. So there are a lot of opportunities out there and if people can help, um, then I don't, you know, then we can go for as much as we really want to, but. Okay, awesome. I'm going to ask you to drop this link and bring us back to the calendar because I'm yeah. paying attention to the clock here. And I did okay. just email it out, so people should get that soon. Okay, wonderful. Um, so just we'll try to close out the fall here. So we'll get our ideas, brainstorm our ideas, hopefully in September. October, we've got the volunteer fair again. We'll be looking to participate in that as well as the open house. Again, visibility for COA. 
November, we can um, identify our project, or that's my suggestion. And then December, we'll do some sort of holiday programming. Um, yeah. Anybody have any thoughts or questions? Does that look reasonable to folks in terms of timeline? Yep, looks fine. Okay. Okay. It looks good, and I think it's also a good approach. Okay, excellent. Manager. Sarah good. has her hand up. Um, I was wondering if it, I don't, do you know when the AARP grants were due? Um, let me Mark check the link I just sent. I think last year. Mm. Well, and while she's looking, the reason I was asking is, is do we need to have it? like as on two months in a row. So maybe one month is brainstorming. And then that gives us a chance to everybody think about some of the different options so that then kind of finalize at the next meeting. Okay. Because I, I think if people show up with very different ideas, all very worthy, and it needs to be focused at there maybe needs to be a discussion and some time to think about it. Mm -hmm. It says March. Yeah, um, the applications opened mid January and then they were due about two months later. So that we might want to adjust our calendar. Uh, well, so if we but, started talking in September, that would give us time to do some of that and then also investigating what it would take to do them. I, I just didn't yeah. want it. I, I don't know that it's going to be a one and done kind of thing. Mm -mm. No, excellent point. And I do think some of our ideas, we, we need to see that they kind of mesh or fit in with the, the bigger senior center plan. So it may be a great idea, but it may not be, you know, this year's grant proposal. So, yeah, good point. And this is very much a draft. So please, um, you know, we'll, we'll be tweaking. My... Um, plan with this is that we're going to look at this at every meeting um, and we can shift things as as need be but I also feel like it will keep us on track could you drop us down to see the seasonal activity Haley mm -hmm. so I just I listed these as seasonal because obviously we can plug them in wherever the the grant that we've been talking about um, member recruitment, assuming I think every year we've got some openings and talk about different recruitment strategies. Um, program review, what I mean by this is taking a look at all the program offerings at the senior center and kind of doing some um, analysis about, you know, where we're doing really well in the, you know, physical fitness end of things, but we don't have much in, you know, another area. So just kind of doing our, our due diligence um, in doing that in conjunction with Haley, because I know that you've got to do some, some analysis there, but trying to make sure that we're um, offering what we need to be offering and that we're meeting various populations needs, I think with that. Um, and then the other, the Agent Dementia Action Plan, um, again, I think that's going to be an ongoing that we need to keep on the calendar multiple times um, throughout the year. A couple of other things that I think would be really valuable for us, and we can discuss this at a future meeting, is um, I think it would be really wonderful for us to meet with other Council on Aging groups, whether it's Hadley, Northampton, Belchertown, South Hadley, wherever. Um, I think we, you know, we can learn from one another. Um, and I also think it would be um, valuable for us to visit other senior centers. Uh, with all due respect, many of them have beautiful facilities. And I think that's something that we can um, dream about what we might want at some point in the future for Amherst. Um, but I, I like to start gathering information early. Um, so those are some other things that I, I think would be good for us to do on kind of an ongoing basis maybe once a quarter we go take a field trip to some senior center and meet with their council on aging so just some ideas i don't know if anybody anybody do you want to ponder that we can discuss that next time because i am conscious of our, our time here Gene? I, yeah i, I don't can't know see anybody so sorry Haley. i need you to tell me if somebody's uh, christina has her hand up yeah 
Yeah, um, I need to adjourn. I need to leave. So okay. I am going to sign off and I'll read the minutes if I missed anything else. And thank you very much, Jean, uh, for all your hard work and everyone else. Terry, I look and forward to seeing you. you in the next Thank you. Month. Take care. All thank right, you, Christina. Christina. Thanks, mm -hmm. Christina. Okay. Anyone else have their hand up, Haley? No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, can you shoot us up to the well very top? Well, we still have to approve our minutes. Yeah. So from last time. We're a little over. Yeah, we are a little over. I reviewed the minutes and uh, I moved <laughs> to approve. Sorry, I have an addition. Miss Jeannie, what you got? I want to add um, the introduction of the calendar. I think that's important to have in the minutes. Where do you want that? It would be under new business. Introduction of the annual calendar. What do you want it to say? You keep cutting out. Oh, sorry. The, it was introduction of an annual calendar. Okay. okay. That's it. That's it. Okay. And Jean, can you email me Sarah, Don, and Mark's email? Absolutely. When you get a moment, no rush. Yep. yep. I can so do I'll that. update the minutes and then I'll email it to everybody. Wonderful. Thank you, Wonderful. Terry. All right. Um, our next meeting is Thursday, August 10th. Um, and shortly thereafter, we will have our um, community safety day, and then the following yeah. week, the Council on Aging, um, Ice Cream Social. I do, again, encourage you beforehand, um, if you're able to attend Monday's meeting, that would be great. And if you have any questions, be in touch. Um, I've got, in addition to emailing Terry, I'm going to email Mark, Dawn, and Sarah, or Al and I, maybe the age and dementia report in the AARP link. So one way or another, we'll get that all out to you so that you, you have that. Yeah. What okay. time is Monday's meeting? 6.30. Mm. Uh, I will, I have a, a standing meeting at seven o'clock from seven till nine, a Zoom meeting on Monday. You can submit so your will, comment ahead will, of time. Okay. And the comment is in reference to? Um, the remaining ARPA funds. So the ARPA fund allocation for the senior center. Okay. All right. Anybody have any final questions? Good. No, I just want to you. apologize again for my um, my ugly start and for going over. So I will I will try to do better next time. <laughs> but I it was really I, nice to have everyone. Yeah, a no tech worries. Tutorial. So yes, and once again, welcome. Delighted. To have our new members and uh, happy to have a full full council. So thank you all. Thanks very much. Have, have a great you. night. Bye. Thank thank you. Welcome to the new people. Welcome. All right. Thank yeah. you very Bye -bye. much.